<laughs> yeah, my name is Mark. I'm from uh, Google, and I'll uh, be talking about uh, getting new features into uh, uh, guest images for uh, confidence with VM. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, look, um, I have some slides, but obviously we're we'll trying to get interactive. If, if people have comments, please speak up. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm mostly coming from like the entity side on my work last year, so this slide sort of uh, largely. Uh, presented from that perspective, but I think the high-level comment applies to like Intel and other upcoming confidential computing technologies. And so the basic idea here is that, you know, obviously it's a big lift to enable the baseline like SEV, we get confidentiality, SEV SMP, we get that integrity and memory encryption through ES and, and hardware-based attestation, which we can build measure boot, and TDX is going straight to all that, and other uh, vendors maybe work on uh, similar properties. But once we, we get to the base thing, there's still like a lot of uh, incremental uh, features uh, that are going to come on top of that. And uh, here I've just listed out, for example, uh, uh, we're talking about there's been a lot of effort in the upstream to get uh, live migration, moving your VM from a source host to a destination host, working with just SEV, not even for SEV SMP. Uh, there's a lot of work ongoing from like a Pharrell Shoot Mobs patch set on uh, trying to do lazy accept memory. So booting up and trying to get all that private memory into our TCB and uh, into the CBM. Uh, 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 we don't need to do it all up front. We can amortize that across the life of the VM. Yeah. There's actually taking advantage of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the hardware rooted attestation uh, available on, on these technologies and, and actually uh, what is in these first offerings yeah. that, are, uh, that people make available to customers. Uh, they may not fully achieve that and want to add in a, a more complete, uh, more proper attestation, how that would look, so, and so on and so forth. So all this slide is showing is that there's a lot of features, it's hard to get all working from day zero, and so that's kind of a problem. And so uh, also I want to add, when we talk about all these features, they're not necessarily additive, at least um, uh, up here I have on the top uh, what, what we sort of have uh, uh, today. Uh, Edit, that's okay. And I have at the bottom, this is not necessarily like a roadmap, I'm not saying we're going to uh, build this, but like these are a lot of features we could potentially add. So like today, on at least on Google Cloud, uh, you can use SEV, just the baseline SEV, so you can just get that, uh, that, that guest private memory confidentiality for that via the memory encryption. Um, and then uh, uh, somebody might add like live migration and enable that, and then they might add, you know, lazy, uh, then add SMP, but then we add SMP, you might have some live migration, and so, uh, but you, so the, the features aren't say additive, additive, that's one of the key points I'm trying to make here. And uh, uh, another point is like, you know, different architectures, like I know live migration in particular, is something that looks quite different for TDX versus SMP. So you could imagine from like a, a customer point of view, they may just be like, I want a confidential VM on, you know, on whatever cloud. And they may not, uh, uh, not all of them may be so passionate about like this vent this hard CP vendor versus that CP vendor, but it could be quite confusing to them if they are on one, uh, run on one CP vendor, and let's say they get live migration, they move to another one, they don't get it, and so on and so forth. So that's another issue. Yeah, and then what I really want to focus on here actually is like I'm, the assumption behind this talk is, or be, behind this discussion is that from uh, day zero, we're not going to have all these features. That's the assumption. And so it's really, this, this talk should almost be titled like how do we roll out new confidential VM features in a way that we don't break things or cause problems? And so here I just have some like concrete examples. So like live migration, like most of these features, they require code in the host the guest firmware, and the guest kernel. So given that, like what could go wrong here if, 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 if a customer thinks they're enabling a, a confidential VM that has, you know, let's say in two years, has one of these new features, and we don't actually have that code in the guest firmware, the guest kernel. That's really what I want to discuss is how to fix that. So if we do nothing, and if we screw up, let's like look at like live migration. Well, if, if somehow we, we figure out a way to organize these features in a way that's not super confusing and they create like their, their SEV VM or their TDX VM and somehow like in their configuration, they think that their VM is live migratable. Well, depending on how frequently live migrate, things may be working great and so on. And then like three, four or five days or three weeks or whatever that, that uh, frequency of live migration is, things just break unexpectedly. That's not good. Uh, and then you talk about like lazy accept. This is uh, later in the slides. I have some links to some upstream discussion we had about this. 
but okay, my understanding of the lazy accept patches is that the firmware tries to accept a minimal, guest firmware tries to accept a minimal amount of uh, memory into the guest. So let's call that like four gigabytes just for purposes of example. So then when you get into the kernel, the kernel is supposed to say, oh, here's my uh, uh, E820 table that has like, and they've added this new unaccepted memory type. And so guest kernel will be like, it's supposed to know about that and know how to like handle that. Well, if it doesn't even know about that, and if we have a guest firmware, that boots into a guest kernel that doesn't know about it. Well, if customers is like running fine with just those four gigabytes, but maybe they purchase a 700 gigabyte VM, they might be very angry when like in two weeks, like, you know, they, they, they oom and their VM dies. Um, and then I have uh, like, like hardware measured boot seems like maybe a, I haven't thought through that as deeply, but that seems like a better case where it should, it would probably, uh, hopefully they're checking their measurement quite early on when they get booted up. Uh, or depending on how that works, maybe it doesn't even allow it to boot. Uh, uh, and that should fail quick, which I'd say is good. So, kind of from like sort of a, at least what I would advocate for is like, obviously when things like just work, that seems like the best. Um, and, uh, but if they're not going to work, if we know that there's this trickiness about like, we already support images that don't have these features, then we add it into these, uh, into the control plane where customers go click buttons or run command lines to say create me a VM. If we add, uh, switches in there and they say, please give me a VM that has these features. Uh, if, 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 if we try to boot an image that doesn't have the code in the guest firmware or in the guest kernel that it needs or both, it, then rather than running for a while, like I, like in the first two scenarios, dying quickly is better, I would argue. If, if you want to, after that, please uh, feel free to speak up, but I'll keep going. So the rest of this, um, the rest of this slide is just, is just trying to build off of the discussion we had in the mailing list. Uh, actually a lot and uh, go into some of those ideas in more detail. Um, so at a high level, these are the, the different ideas I'm gonna uh, discuss. So obviously if we could get all the features in from like day zero, that seems like the best. I know that's kind of the direction we're heading in the lazy accept patch series right now. Um, I'm not sure that even if we get to work there, there's an open question. Uh, will we just be running into this problem later on? Uh, then I have a, this, this second bullet I was just thinking of yesterday, so maybe it doesn't work, we'll discuss it, but, uh, uh, well, wasn't discussed on the mailing list, but could the guest somehow qu query itself, uh, uh, to see if it has these features, then there's feature negotiation that was discussed at length on the mailing list that, you know, be complicated. So, but, but we'll talk about it. And then the other idea is like, uh, at the, uh, uh, image level, can we somehow like, this is really pushing the burden up into the, uh, for, for like uh, us, like the cloud provider, whoever is uh, uh, managing creating these VMs, but can we somehow annotate the image itself with metadata to to to, to uh, properly control this problem? Uh, so the the get a feature working from day zero is I just put in here for completeness, but uh, I think rather than spend time on this slide since the slot's only twenty minutes, um, I'll wait a minute to see if anyone wants to raise their hand. I think I'm just going to jump to the next slide. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, here the idea is um, if, like once you're inside the VM, if it has some sort of pervert interface or something to say, are these features enabled? Is lazy accept enabled? enabled is um, is uh, lazy, uh, is live migration enabled or whatever? Like the bird, like, could the guest check, oh, this is what I think is enabled, and do I have the code to enable it? And so uh, this is just pseudocode. This is not like fully fleshed out. But that, the assumption behind this is that in order to add a new feature, you basically have to have this, this get firmware features map. Uh, um, without that, you cannot enable a, uh, a new feature. Otherwise, you run this chicken and egg problem where uh, uh, the, the guest code doesn't, you know, uh, if it just starts enabling it without doing any checks, you just, there's no way to know whether, whether it's, it, it, uh, what the situation is. Um, so the idea here is, you know, the guest firmware could say, okay, this is how I think I'm configured. Again, this is assuming some sort of pair virtualization uh, way for it to get that information for what the control plane. So like I created a VM and I clicked like somewhere, like give me this, this CVM 2.0, for example, that has live migration and SNP and lazy accept or whatever. And so this thing returns me like, like L, live migration equals true, uh, lazy accept equals true or whatever. And then the firmware itself somehow has some 
data structure that maybe can be all zero, like a like a bitmap or sense all zeroed out to start out with, meaning all these features not enabled. So you can get a new feature, you reserve like some offset into the bitmap for that feature. I'm just making this up. And then it can say, oh, okay, my VM config had bit 12. Bit 12 is in the bitmap is live migration. Oh, but bit 12, like this thing doesn't exist. But if we checked it in, we defaulted all to zero. Now I check bit 12. And if bit 12 is like not equal to bit 12 in my VM config, then I'm just gonna self-terminate myself and die early. So then we know the there's some work in the control plane. And then you can do the same idea in the guest kernel. So it's just basically a copy paste of this. So I'll take a pause. Uh, Peggy? Or, or hold on, I think there should be a mic that we can toss you. Oh, is it? I'm trying not to kill somebody here. All right. So what about future compatibility? For example, you run a guest kernel. You, it basically is stuck in time. Now you add a new feature in the, in the future. The guest doesn't know how to check if this feature is enabled or not because- the Yeah, so that's the whole idea. Like feature. this slide sort of on its own doesn't stand up very well. But like if we, let's say we, we add some like, let's, go, let's just take a bitmap as a concrete again. I'm not saying that's necessarily the right way to do this. And let's say the bitmap, like let's say someone were to check in right now a, pa a patch into the, both the guest firmware and the guest kernel that just had like 1,000 bits and they're just all zeroed and they're all reserved. And then going forward, if you add into the firmware, say a new feature, say lazy accept, part of the patch set is to reserve one of those bits. And so if the guest can say, oh, I, and also part of the, the, the requirement is the guest has to have some way to, to query the host, maybe through some extension to GHCB or I don't know, or GCI or whatever, or GCI, GCI is not the right thing, whatever the equivalent is on TDX. Then if you sort of have like all these requirements, obviously if people screw this up, then things aren't gonna work, this isn't gonna work. But if we put this a new requirement to add a new feature, then the idea is that things default to not enabled. And when you add the new feature, you, you reserve some, 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 some data, uh, some bit or something in the guest to, to communicate that you're enabling the feature and make sure it's lined up with your VM configuration, if that makes sense. That's a bit like Virtio official negotiation, kind of. I will take your word for that because I don't know anything about Virtio. Um, so uh, the, the, the Virtio feature comparison is pretty good. Do you actually need this at all? Like, and I guess just for the discussion, right? As a cloud provider, why can't you say, well, for lazy except I need OVMF version blah and kernel version blah, and you just track all that. Because then also, if there's a bug found, the firmware version might say, oh, I support lazy except, but actually it doesn't because. I have that in a future slide. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what about just supporting the latest? supporting like the problem we run into is like let's say let's say we go to like uh let's say we all like we we have sev out there today so let's say we're going to enable like live migration the problem is we run into this problem where like we have all the images out there that don't have the patches for like live migration so we can't go to customers that are out and running and tell them they have to reboot they have to like delete their vm and take the new image and all that so that's why just supporting the latest is not really feasible yeah so so customers who already running, they're not going to get live migration. Right. When they reboot, they're going to get it. Or but then they have to switch their image. And my understanding is like, we can't force customer to update their image. Oh, you've promised too much again. Yeah, we promised too much. Exactly. <laughs> now, I didn't make up that rule, by the way. That's, yeah. But... Okay, so I'll, um, let's say more. Okay, so I'll go to the next one. Okay, so this was discussed on the mailing list. Actually, a lot of this was discussed on the mailing list. Um, in fact, if, it's a long discussion. I really liked uh, one of the uh, replies uh, Dave Hansen had where he's like, there's basically three things you could do, one, two, or three. So if people are just interested in, in this first link, I think that's a good read, uh, that particular reply. Um, but anyway, the idea uh, here, this, this was really discussed in the context of the lazy accept problem that I, I, uh, I described earlier, and maybe I should have or, or ordered this slide first just to give that background. But uh, the idea here is, is, the idea is really specific to lazy accept. I don't know how much broadly it applies, although maybe people have more ideas. But the idea here is like in that lazy accept problem where like the guest firmware itself has to, um, has to basically make a decision whether or not to go ahead and accept all memory into the guest or whether to just accept that minimal amount because it's assuming that the kernel is going to boot into is enlightened about 
unaccepted memory is going to handle that. How, it, it, by the way, the kernel could just be enlightened enough just to accept it all up front if we wanted to, but it has that, that enlightenment has, it has to know how to handle it or else you, the memory is not going to be available. And so the, let's see, I, uh, the pseudocode I wrote here, uh, so somehow the, basically this line right here, if kernel, somehow the guest firmware has to be able to infer what, uh, sorry, the guest, yeah, guest firmware has to be able to infer what guest kernel features it, it's booting into has. So I, I think this was discussed at length at the, um, on the mailing list. And I think the direction we were heading toward was, was this is probably not the right direction. But I, I wanted to put up here for completeness. I am a vector it. So this is from Dave Gilbert. Um, he makes the observation that the, uh, the handoff between the firmware and the kernel uh, doing the same migration so it can get confusing. And B, uh, the vertio is something like, here's the feature the host supports, the guest masks them, and you tell the hosts what the guest supports. And C is there's a difference in how much you care about the missing feature, i.e. the guest might not care, the host doesn't support live migration. And I'm not sure, Dave, what is the actual question here? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to the extent that there's a, yeah, it, 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 it's confusing. And yeah, the, the different features, some of them, uh, I'm presumably, kind of, kind of going back to that slide earlier where I had, where it's like, okay, what happens if if the control plane, if the customer thinks they have a feature, what happens if they don't? I, I think the earlier slide illustrates that that's probably not a place we want to go down. Um, but, um, go ahead. Yeah, we got booted out again. Should we keep going? We can come back to Dave if... Uh... Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Boris. Can you, can you communicate to, to, to your customers, say, okay, you're getting this guest solution. Run your workload and everything you want to do with it and see whether. Right. That's something I don't have in the slide, but it's an excellent idea. And it's not even that we have to tell our customer to test it. We have quite a bit of testing in place that we. So actually, one background, and maybe this is specific to Google Cloud. I don't know how this applies to other companies, mm -hmm. but we kind of have two categories of images, actually. We have the images that are sort of our well supported, like we talked to, you know, SUSE, Canonical, hmm. Red Hat, sorry if I left out your dish, but we talked to all of them and we know that like, they're, they're telling us, Google, this thing should work. And then we have quite a bit of testing we do. And I, I think that actually can help us quite a bit here and make this not nearly as bad as the talks coming off. So that is something, yeah. We don't have to ask the customer to do it. We can get that, like before we enable the feature, we can test all those mainline uh, images and we should. Uh, there's also custom images where customers build their own image. I don't know how prevalent that is for confidential VM, I, but I, it is a thing. And for that case, I think exactly what you just suggested, Boris, maybe in our documentation, having, mm. you know, if you build your image, please run these. If we could make those tests open source, actually, because a lot of our testing is internal, um, that would help here. Because this whole thing we're talking about, this is temporary. Once all the features are right. there, you don't need well, it. That was one thing about the, the mailing list discussion that, Temporary can be like a long time. It, like there was a slide in here uh, from my um, co-author Gao that he put in. I removed it, but some of the distro kernels can be oh. old and they can take quite a while to be updated. Um, and like I was saying earlier, even if we have those good communication paths, which I feel like we do have, thank you, the folks who are with the audience or attending. Uh, like I feel pretty confident I can reach out to distros and get the patches that we need in. But at the same time, I can't. I, because we're too nice to our customers, I can't go and tell everyone who used that old image to, I can't force them to switch easily. Okay, I think the time is up. Okay, great.
Uh, yeah, so the slides will get them posted to the website, and then uh, folks can read off offline if they. Uh, the rest of the talk just was talking about uh, image annotation as well. I think, and the version idea that David Kaplan had in there, there's a slide on that. Thank you. Thanks for the interesting discussion, and thanks for your presentation, Mark. Um,